The Old Woman of Berkeley by Robert Southey. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Old Woman of Berkeley. The raven croaked as she sate at her meal, and the old woman knew what he said, and she grew pale at the raven's tail, and sickened and went to her bed. Now fetch me my children, and fetch them with speed, the old woman of Berkeley said. The monk, my son, and my daughter, the nun, bid them hasten, or I shall be dead. The monk, her son, and her daughter, the nun, their way to Berkeley went, and they have brought with pious thought the holy sacrament. The old woman shrieked as they entered her door, and she cried with a voice of despair, Now take away the sacrament, for its presence I cannot bear. Her lip it trembled with agony, the sweat ran down her brow. I have tortures in store for evermore, but spare me, my children, now. Away they sent the sacrament, the fit it left her weak. She looks at her children with ghastly eyes, and faintly struggled to speak. All kind of sin have I rioted in, and the judgment now must be. But I secured my children's souls, O oh, pray, my children, for me. I've anointed myself with infant's fat, the fiends have been my slaves. From sleeping babes I've sucked the breath, and breaking by charms the sleep of death, I have called the dead from their graves. And the devil will fetch me now in fire, my witchcrafts to atone, and I who have troubled the dead man's grave shall never have rest in my own. Bless, I entreat, my winding sheet, my children, I beg of you, and with holy water sprinkle my shroud, and sprinkle my coffin too. And let me be chained in my coffin of stone, and fasten it strong, I implore, with iron bars and with three chains, chain it to the church floor. And bless the chains and sprinkle them, and let fifty priests stand round, who night and day the mass may say where I lie on the ground and see that fifty choristers beside the bier attend me and day and night by the taper's light with holy hymns defend me let the church bells all both great and small be told by night and day to drive from thence the fiends who come to bear my body away and ever have the church door barred after the even song and i beseech you children dear let the bars and bolts be strong. And let this be three days and nights, my wretched corpse to save, till the fourth morning keep me safe, and then I may rest in my grave. The old woman of Berkeley laid her down, and her eyes grew deadly dim. Short came her breath, and the struggle of death did loosen every limb. They blessed the old woman's winding sheet with rites and prayers due. With holy water they sprinkled her shroud, and they sprinkled her coffin, too. And they chained her in her coffin of stone, and with iron barred it down, and in the church with three strong chains that chained it to the ground. And they blessed the chains and sprinkled them, and fifty priests stood round, by night and day the mass to say where she lay on the ground. And fifty sacred choristers beside the bier attend her, who day and night by the taper's light should with holy hymns defend her. To see the priest and choristers, it was a goodly sight, each holding, as it were a staff, a taper burning bright. And the church bells, all, both great and small, did toll so loud and long, and they have barred the church door hard after the even song. And the first night the taper's light burnt steadily and clear, but they without a hideous rout of angry fiends could hear. A hideous roar at the church door, like a long thunder peal, and the priests they prayed and the choristers sung louder in fearful zeal. Loud told the bell the priests prayed well, the tapers they burnt bright. The monk her son and her daughter the nun, they told their beads all night. The cocky crew, the fiends they flew, from the voice of the morning away, then undisturbed the choristers sing and the fifty priests they pray, 
as they had sung and prayed all night they prayed and sung all day the second night the taper's light burnt dismally in blue and every one saw his neighbor's face like a dead man's face to view and yells and cries without a rise that the stoutest heart might shock and a deafening roar like a cataract pouring over a mountain rock the monk and nun they told their beads as fast as they could tell and i as louder grew the noise the faster went the bell louder and louder the choristers sung as they trembled more and more and the priests as they prayed to heaven for aid they smote their breast full sore the cocky crew the fiends they flew from the voice of the morning away then undisturbed the choristers sing and the fifty priests they pray as they had sung and prayed all night the prayed and sung all day the third night came and the taper's flame a frightful stench did make and they burnt as though they had been dipped in the burning brimstone lake and the loud commotion like the rushing of ocean grew momently more and more and strokes as of a battering ram did shake the strong church door the bellmen they for very fear could toll the bell no longer and still as louder grew the strokes their fear it grew the stronger the monk and nun forgot their beads they fell on the ground in dismay there was not a single saint in heaven to whom they did not pray and the chorister song which late was so strong faltered with consternation for the church did rock as an earthquake shock uplifted its foundation and a sound was heard like a trumpet's blast that shall one day wake the dead the strong church door could bear no more and the bolts and the bars they fled and the taper's light was distinguished quite and the choristers faintly sung and the priests dismayed panted and prayed and on all the saints in heaven for aid they called with trembling tongue and in he came with eyes of flame the devil to fetch the dead and all the church with his presence glowed like a fiery furnace red he laid his hand on the iron chains and like flax they mouldered asunder and the coffin lid which was barred so firm he burst with his voice of thunder and he bade the old woman of berkeley rise and some with her master away cold sweat started on that cold corpse at the voice she was forced to obey she rose on her feet in her winding sheet her dead flesh quivered with fear and a groan like that which the old woman gave never did mortal hear she followed her master to the church door there stood a black horse there his breath was red like furnace smoke his eyes like a meteor's glare the devil he flung her up on the horse and he leapt up before and away like the lightning speed they went and she was seen no more they saw her no more but her cries for four miles round they could hear and children at rest at their mother's breast started and screamed with fear and a poem this recording is in the public domain a patch of old snow by robert frost read for levervox dot org by helen z ferrara for jean there's a patch of old snow in a corner that i should have guessed was a blown away paper the rain had brought to rest it is speckled with grime as if small print overspread it the news of a day i've forgotten if i ever read it end of poem this recording is in the public domain a poison tree by william blake read for librivox dot org by helen z ferrara for jean i was angry with my friend i told my wrath my wrath did end i was angry with my foe I told it not, my wrath did grow, and I watered it in fears, night and morning with my tears, and I sunned it with smiles, 
and with soft deceitful wiles. And it grew both day and night, till it bore an apple bright. And my foe beheld it shine, and he knew that it was mine. And into my garden stole, when the night had veiled the pole, in the morning glad I see my foe outstretched beneath the tree. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Poor Man's Pig by Edmund Blunden. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Already fallen plum bloom stars the green, and apple boughs as gnarled as old toads' back where their small roses ere a rose is seen the building thrush watches old job who stacks the bright peeled osiers on the sunny fence the pent sow grunts to hear him stumping by and tries to push the bolt and scamper thence but her ringed snout still keeps her to the sty then out he lets her run away she snorts in bundling gallop for the cottage door with hungry hubbub begging crusts and orts then, like a whirlwind, bumping round once more, nuzzling the dog, making the pullets run, and sulky as a child when her play's done. In the poem, this recording is in the public domain. The Rainy Day by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. The day is cold and dark and dreary, it rains and the wind is never weary. The vine still clings to the mouldering wall, but at every gust the dead leaves fall and the day is dark and dreary. My life is cold and dark and dreary, it rains and the wind is never weary. My thoughts still cling to the mouldering past, but the hopes of youth fall thick in the blast and the days are dark and dreary be still sad heart and cease repining behind the clouds is the sun still shining thy fate is the common fate of all into each life some rain must fall some days must be dark and dreary end of poem this recording is in the public domain Reflections Irregular by John Rollin Ridge Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf I cast a backward look. How changed the scenes of other days! I walk, a wearied man, estranged from youth's delightful ways. There in the distance rolleth yet that stream whose waves my boyish bosom oft has met, when pleasure lit mine eye. It rolleth yet as clear, as bold, as pure as it did then but i have grown in youth time old and mixing now with men my sobered eye must not attend to that sweet stream my early friend the music of its waters clear must now but seldom reach my ear but murmur still now carelessly to every heedless passer-by how often o'er its rugged cliffs i've strayed and gaily listened as its billows played such deep low music at their base and then such brightening thoughts would trace upon the tablet of my mind alas those days have run their race their joys i nowhere now can find i have no time to think of climbing glory's sunny mount i have no time to drink at learning's bubbling fount now corn and potatoes call me from scenes that were wont to enthrall me a weary wight both day and night my brain is full of business matters reality has snatched the light from fancy's head that shone so bright and tore the dreams she wove to tatters end of poem this recording is in the public domain free black pants by robert frost read for librivox by josh middledorf out through the fields and the woods, and over the walls I have wended. I have climbed the hills of view, and looked at the world, and descended. I have come by the highway home, and lo, 
it is ended. The leaves are all dead on the ground, save those that the oak is keeping to ravel them one by one, and let them go scraping and creeping out over the crusted snow when others are sleeping. And the dead leaves lie huddled and still, no longer blown hither and thither, the last lone aster is gone, the flowers of the witch hazel wither, the heart is still aching to seek, but the feet question, whither? Ah, when to the heart of man was it ever less than a treason to go with the drift of things, to yield with a grace to reason, and bow and accept the end of a love or a season? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Revelation by Robert Frost Read for LibriVox by Josh Middledorf We make ourselves a place apart Behind light words that tease and flout But oh, the agitated heart Till someone find us really out Tis pity if the case require, or so we say That in the end we speak the literal To inspire the understanding of a friend but so with all, from babes that play at hide-and-seek to God afar, so all who hide too well away must speak and tell us where they are. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Riddle from Tarendal, Act 2, Scene 4, by Frederick Schiller. Read for LibriVox.org the tree whereupon decay all those from mortals sprung full old and yet whose spray is ever green and young to catch the light it rolls each leaf upon one side the other black as coals the sun has ne'er descried it places on new rings as oft as it blows the age too of all things to mortal gaze it shows upon its bark so green a name oft meets the eye yet tis no longer seen when it grows old and dry this tree what can it mean i wait for thy reply end of poem this recording is in the public domain robin's return by Edith M. Thomas, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Robin's return. Robin on the tilting bow, red-breast rover, tell me how you the weary time have passed since we saw and heard you last. In a green and pleasant land, by a summer sea breeze fanned, orange trees with fruit are bent. There the weary time I've spent robin rover there no doubt your best music you poured out piping to a stranger's ear you forgot your lovers here little lady on my word you do wrong a true heart bird not one ditty would i sing mong the leaves or on the wing in the sun or in the rain stranger's ear would list in vain if i ever tried a note something rose within my throat twas because my heart was true to the north and springtime new my mind's eye a nest could see in yon old forked apple tree end of poem this recording is in the public domain sonnet one hundred forty one in faith i do not love thee with mine eyes by william shakespeare read for librivox dot org by phil Schampf. in faith i do not love thee with mine eyes for they in thee a thousand errors note but tis my heart that loves what they despise who in despite of you is pleased to dote nor are mine ears with thy tongue's tune delighted nor tender feeling to base touches prone nor taste nor smell desire to be invited to any sensual feast with thee alone 
but my five wits nor my five senses can dissuade one foolish heart from serving thee who leaves unswayed the likeness of a man thy proud heart slave and vassal wretch to be only my plague thus far i count my gain that she that makes me sin awards me pain end of poem this recording is in the public domain the splendor of lilies by margaret elizabeth sangster read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter oh rare as the splendor of lilies and sweet as the violet's breath comes the jubilant morning of easter the triumph of life over death and fresh from the earth's quickened bosom full baskets of flowers we bring and scatter their satin soft petals to carpet a path for our king in the countless green blades of the meadow the sheen of the daffodil's gold in the tremulous blue on the mountains the opaline mist on the wold in the tinkle of brooks through the pasture the river's strong sweep to the sea are signs of the day that is hasting in gladness to you and to me o oh, dawn in thy splendor of lilies thy fluttering violet breath o oh, jubilant morning of easter thou triumph of life over death then fresh from the earth's quickened bosom full baskets of flowers we bring and scatter their satin soft petals to carpet a path for our king end of poem this recording is in the public domain the stars in their courses by john freeman read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson and now while the dark vast earth shakes and rocks in this wild dreamlike snare of mortal shocks how look i muse those cold and solitary stars on these magnificent cruel wars venus that brushes with her shining lips surely the wakeful edge of the world and mocks with hers its all ungentle wantonness or the large moon pricked by the spars of ships creeping and creeping in their restlessness the moon pouring strange light on things more strange looks she unheedfully on seas and lands trembling with change and fear of counter-change o oh, not earth trembles but the stars the stars the sky is shaken and the cool air is quivering i cannot look upon the crowded height and see the fair stars trembling in their light for thinking of the star-like spirits of men crowding the earth and with great passion quivering stars quenched in anger and hate stars sick with pity I cannot look up to the naked skies, Because a sorrow on dark midnight lies, Death on the living world of sense, Because on my own hand a shadow lies That may not rise, Because from bare gray hillside and rich city Streams of uncomprehending sadness pour, Thwarting the eager spirit's pure intelligence. How look, I muse, those cold and solitary stars on these magnificent cruel wars stars trembled in broad heaven faint with pity an hour to dawn i looked beside the trees wet mist shaped other trees that branching rose covering the woods and putting out the stars there was no murmur on the seas no wind blew only the wandering air that grows with dawn then murmurs sighs and dies the mist climbed slowly putting out the stars and the earth trembled when the stars were gone and moving strangely everywhere upon the trembling earth thickened the watery mist and for a time the holy things are veiled england's wise thoughts are swords her quiet hours are trodden underfoot like wayside flowers and every english heart is england's holy in starless night a serious passion streams the heaven with light 
a common beating is in the air the heart of england throbbing everywhere and all her roads are nerves of noble thought and all her people's brains is but her brain and all her history less her shame is part of her requickened consciousness her courage rises clean again even in victory there hide defeat the spirit's murdered though the body survives except the cause for which a people strives burn with no covetous foul heat fights she against herself who infamously draws the sword against man's secret spiritual laws but thou england because of bitter heel hath sought to bruise the brain the sensitive will the conscience of the world for this england art risen and shalt fight purely through long profoundest night making their quarrel thine who are grieved like thee and if to thee the stars yield victory tempering their hate of the great foe that hurled vainly her strength against the conscience of the world i looked again or dreamed i looked and saw the stars again in all their peace again the moving mist had gone the shining still moon went high and pale above the hill and now those lights were trembling in the vast ways of the nervy heaven nor trembled earth profound and calm they gazed as the soft-shod hours passed and with less fear not with less awe remembering england all the blood and pain how look i cried you stern and solitary stars on these disastrous wars august nineteen fourteen in the poem this recording is in the public domain There is no death by Gordon Johnston read for LibriVox.org by Son of the Exiles There is no death I tell you they have not died they live and breathe with you they walk here at your side they tell you things are true why dream of poppied sod when you can feel their breath when flower and soul and god knows there is no death death's but an open door we move from room to room there is one life no more no dying and no tomb why seek ye them above those that ye love dear the all of god is love the all of god is here i tell you they have not died their hands clasp yours and mine they are but glorified they have become divine they live they know they see they shout with every breath life is eternity there is no death end of poem this recording is in the public domain to alice sit by the hour by franklin p adams read for LibriVox.org by linda olson fytak to alice sit by the hour lady in the blue kimono you that live across the way one may see you gazing 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 all the live long day idly looking out your window from your vantage point above are you convalescent lady are you worse are you in love ever gazing as you hang there on the little window seat into flats across the way or down upon the prosy street can't you rent a pianola can't you iron sew or cook write a letter bake a pudding make a bed or read a book tell me of the fascination you indubitably find in the high cash chloe's man's holler in the hurdy-gurdy grind are your spanish castles blueprints 
are you waiting for a night to descend upon your fastness and to save you from your plight lady in the blue kimono idle molly coddled dame does your doing nothing never make you feel the blush of shame as you sit and stare and ditto not a single thing to do lady in the blue kimono lady how i envy you end of poem this recording is in the public domain trees by joyce kilmer read for librivox dot org by brian i think that i shall never see a poem lovely as a tree a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast a tree that looks at god all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray a tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair upon whose bosom snow has lain who intimately lives with rain poems are made by fools like me but only god can make a tree end of poem this recording is in the public domain What is Life? by John Clare Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson And what is life? An hourglass on the run, A mist retreating from the morning sun, A busy, bustling, still-repeated dream, Its length a minute's pause, A moment's thought, And happiness? A bubble on the stream, That in the act of seizing shrinks to naught, what is vain hope, the puffing gale of morn that robs each flower of its gem and dies, a cobweb hiding disappointment's thorn, which stings more keenly through the thin disguise. And thou, O trouble, nothing can suppose, and sure the power of wisdom only knows what need requireth of thee. So free and liberal as thy bounty flows, some necessary cause must surely be. But disappointments, pains, and very woe, Devoted wretches feel. The universal plagues of life below Are mysteries still neath fate's unbroken seal. And what is death? Is still the cause unfound, That dark, mysterious name of horrid sound? A long and lingering sleep the weary crave, And peace? Where can its happiness abound? Nowhere at all, save heaven and the grave. Then what is life? When stripped of its disguise, a thing to be desired it cannot be, since everything that meets our foolish eyes gives proof sufficient of its vanity. Tis but a trial all must undergo to teach unthankful mortals how to prize that happiness vain man's denied to know until he's called to claim it in the skies in the poem this recording is in the public domain when i received this from lazarus spengler i made him the following poem in reply by albrecht durer translated from german by mrs heaton when i received this from lazarus spengler I made him the following poem in reply in nuremberg it is known full well a man of letters now doth dwell one of our lord's most useful men he is so clever with his pen and others know so well to hit and make ridiculous with wit and he has made a jest of me because i made some poetry and of true wisdom something wrote but as he likes my verses not he makes a laughing stock of me and says i'm like the cobbler he who criticised the pally's art with this he tries to make me smart because he thinks it is for me to paint and not write poetry but i have undertaken this 
and will not stop for him or his to learn whatever thing i can for which will blame me no wise man for he who only learns one thing and to naught else his mind doth bring to him as to the notary it haps who lived here as do we in this our town to him was known to write one form and one alone two men came to him with a need that he should draw them up a deed and he proceeded very well until their names he came to spell Götz was the first name that perplexed and rosenstammen was the next the notary was much astonished and thus his clients he admonished dear friends he said you must be wrong these names don't to my form belong franz and fritz i know full well but of no others have heard tell and so he drove away his clients and people mocked his little science to me that it may hap not so something of all things i will know not only writing will i do but learn to practise physic too till men surprised will say beshrew me what good this painter's medicines do me therefore hear and i will tell some wise receipts to keep you well a little drop of alkali is good to put into the eye he who finds it hard to hear should mandel oil put in his ear and he who would from gout be free not wine but water drink should he he who would live to be a hundred will see my counsel has not blundered therefore i will still make rhymes though my friend may laugh at times so the painter with hairy beard says to the writer who mocked and jeered end of poem this recording is in the public domain